I want to do one more example for you guys again on graphing. So going through that whole process again for a different function. Um, let me find which function I want to do. Oh, I see it. Okay, so I want to graph. We'll graph this function f of x is equal to x to the fourth plus 4x cubed using this first derivative and second derivative. Okay? And the idea is just glean as much information as you can from the first derivative and the second derivative and then and then we'll go from there. Okay? Okay, so let's begin. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is get these derivatives x to the fourth plus 4x four cubed prime of x 4x cubed plus 12x squared 12x squared plus 24x right is that what you guys get okay so and then I think what I want to do first is do this first derivative okay so info information from f prime and basically we'll do the first derivative tests for increasing, decreasing, and find maxes and mins from all from that one chart. Okay? So find the critical values. This is factorable, 4x plus 12. So I get x is 0, 4x plus 12 is 0. So my critical values um, happen at 0 and negative 3. And I'll go ahead and make this number line. And do this first derivative testing. I think I'll have enough room here, but we'll see. Okay, so again the interval I'm working with minus infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 0, and 0 to infinity, right? Those are the intervals. I need to choose a test point. negative 4, I'll pick negative 2, and 1. Pick something in these intervals. Let me go ahead and plug in these three functions. Um, the, fir the original function, x to the fourth, plus 4x cubed, and then the derivative, 4x cubed, plus 12x squared and then 12x squared plus 24x so the first derivative so now I'm gonna find f prime of the test point right and I'll plug that in on my calculator And I get f prime is negative 64. At 2, it's 16. And at 1, it's also 16. So this positive or negative, I get negative here, positive, positive here. Okay, so this tells me this is going down and then up. I should get a relative min there, and this is just up and up, so no relative max is here. But a relative min right here at x equal to negative 3. Okay, otherwise I have, let's write down the results down here. I have that f is decreasing 
on minus infinity to minus 3 and increasing on minus 3 to 0 and again on 0 to infinity. Okay, is that what you guys get? Okay, so let's go ahead then and then, oh, let's write this down. I want to say there's also a relative min at x equal to negative 3. And I need to figure out as a side note what f of negative 3 is. So let me put that in. I get negative 3, the output to be negative 27. Is that what you guys get? Let me just check. Okay, yeah, I get negative 27. Relative min at x equal to negative 3 of negative 27. Okay, so we're going to put use all of that information. But first I want to go through, that's all of the information that I can get from the first derivative. Okay, and because I do this whole first derivative chart, it's really pointless to use in this whole graphing scenario the second derivative test for the maxes and mins, but, but we can um, use that to confirm. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and go through and get information from the second derivative. Okay. Um, okay, so the second derivative of this function is this f double prime of x is 12x squared plus 24x, right? Okay, and so I'm going to find these hypercritical points or hypercritical values. where f double prime of x is 0, or again, f double prime of x is undefined. Okay. So again, for this particular function, it's not undefined anywhere, but it is equal to 0, so let's factor out a 12x. I'm left with x plus 2. So x equals 0 and x is equal to negative 2. So I'll do the second derivative test and make my chart for that. There's negative 2, there's my 0. And here's the interval, right? So I get minus infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 0, and 0 to infinity as my three intervals for concavity. Now just let's not keep track, let's not lose track. This is the second derivative test, right? So when I'm testing things in here, when I do a test point, I still take it in here, minus 3, negative 1, and 1, but I'm going to plug that into the second derivative. So let me go ahead and do that. Negative 3, negative 1, and 1. And for negative 3, I get 36. For negative 1, I get negative 12. And for 1, I get 36. Okay? So again, is it positive or negative? Here it's positive. Negative. Some people just write a minus sign in here. And positive, right? In terms of concavity, and I'll draw a quick, positive is concave up, negative concave down, and like this, okay? And where I'm switching these, I get inflection points here, right? Here, inflection point.
at x equal negative 2 and x equal to 0, where I'm switching concavities, right? It's a lag in my pen. Um, okay, so I want to go ahead and find these actual output values for the inflection points, but otherwise I have this concavity um, information now. So and maybe let's write that down too. So let me go here. Let's do inflection points first. There's always so much information to come out of here. But again, the inflection point I plug into the original function, f of negative 2, to figure out. And I get f of negative 2 is negative 16. And f of 0 is 0. Okay, so those are my two inflection points. So inflection point, if you're keeping track or making notes to yourself somewhere, like I am, we're going to put all this together on the graph. Okay. Okay, and now for the information about concavity. So I want to go up here and it, I have, um, so I have its concave up. on minus infinity to minus 2 and again on 0 to infinity and concave down on minus 2 to 0 okay so let's go and put this together on an actual graph okay so, and I'll try and make notes of everything that I'm going to use. Um, we have this, these points, points that I have, right? I have a minimum at negative 3, negative 27, and I have two inflection points um, at negative 2, negative 16, and also at 0, 0, okay? Um, I have that it's decreasing on minus infinity to minus 3 and increasing on minus 3 to 0 and 0 to infinity. Okay. Um, inflection points, I got all that. And let's try to talk about maybe concavity. So it's concave up from minus infinity to minus 2. And also from 0 to infinity and concave down from minus 2 to 0. Okay, check that and make sure that that's all right. Okay, so I think I got all of that correct. And let's go ahead and put this on um, the graph, or a graph. So let's see here. Now again, I'm going to take a look at scale here. I have to go down to negative 27. Um, there's not that many high values, actually, but but negative 27 is one of them. So honestly, when I have to get there, I'm going to count by fives. Five. like there. But then the other stuff that's happening in here is not that spread out, so I, I kind of want to separate that to see it better, so I'll, I'll count by ones here on the x-axis. 
Let's find these different scales on the different axes. Especially in this case, we want to kind of see what's going on. It depends if you're, if kind of what you're doing tends to um, uh, kind of hide what the real data is showing, but, but I think it's okay here. Okay, so and then I'm going to put these points in. Negative 3, negative 27 is somewhere right down here, right? And that's my min. I have an inflection point at negative 2, negative 16 and at 0, 0. Those are the points that I have, right? Um, it's concave up um, and has a kind of um, so, oh, this is a min. This is what I want to say. So, and it should be concave up right here, right? From minus infinity to minus 2. So let me, let's do this. Maybe I'll mark these so, just so that we can see the concavity, right? At this point, I get a split, and again at 0. So right here, and it goes from concave up to concave down, So it's kind of curving down like this as I as I go up here. And then here again it should flip and go concave up again. Kind of something like that. Do you see how that works? Those are two points of inflection. This is going to change right here. And then I'd love to know where this one comes back up and, and hits through. And this is what I was talking about again looking at the first the original function f of x, um, and that original function is this x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. It's easy enough to find the x x, um, the x intercepts, so set this equal to zero. And I get x is equal to zero and x is equal to minus 4. So this should really come back up and hit right there. So let me let me change this a little bit. But that is a pretty steep turn. You see? And then you also see these points of, it should be decreasing from minus infinity to minus 3, where I hit this. And then increasing here, increasing here. It's still increasing, but concave up. So it kind of looks something like this. Okay, now you can compare this graph. You should get pretty good graphs actually compared to what your calculator is showing you based on this concavity and increasing, decreasing. It can really um, improve the quality of your graphs a lot over just point plotting. So um, let me know if you have any questions.